Karma is a single target slash AoE mage introduced this weekend in the latest patch. He belongs to the Esoterracist faction and he is very powerful and has massive nuke and burst damage options. We'll go over his skills quickly and his awakenings, the priority for his skills, what gear sets you may want, what stat priority to have, the content he is best for and some suggested pairings that may work especially well specifically for Karma. So, first things up, his skills. Karmet has a talent. Obliteration Strike deals 400% extra high damage to enemies who have not yet been attacked. His basic attack hits two enemies. When his ultimate Festering Curse is activated for 15 seconds up to 20 seconds, his ultimate skill deals 320% damage up to 400% AoE damage. And this is very powerful. The rage cap is quite high at 1300, reduced to 1200, but this is still quite a high rage cap, so the ultimate will not be up a lot. As you can see, he starts with 600, so you will get the initial cast quite quickly, but subsequent ultimates will take a while to build up. He has another passive Curse of Obliteration. Every 7 down to 5 attacks will apply Curse. Curse is a debuff that lasts for 2 to 4 seconds at max skill level, which makes the enemy unable to perform basic attack. The next attack to an enemy target with Curse can trigger Obliteration Strike again. Again, Obliteration Strike is 400% extra damage, so then you can trigger it on enemies if they have the Curse debuff on them. So it allows him to get out his bonus damage on targets without requiring them to be the first attack, which is very powerful. And his last passive, Infernal Plague, when killing an enemy, the attack will bounce to two enemies, dealing 120 to 160% magic damage. As for Karmet's Awakenings, the first one, his passive allowing him to bounce onto two targets when killing an enemy, now bounces onto three targets. This is quite useful, it makes him a lot more viable in AoE content, makes him more powerful for Gear Raid 1, for example. His second Awakening of Attack 5% is very nice, just damage is good. His his third awakening increases the attack range of his ultimate festering curse. I'm guessing this will just be another tile on his attack range while the ultimate is active. That's very powerful actually. It makes him a lot more versatile. His fourth awakening grants him one auto rage regen. This means he's just passively gaining an extra rage regen point. This is very nice as we discussed earlier briefly. He has a very high rage cap. So getting as much rage regen as you can on Karma will be very valuable. And his fifth awakening means that when he kills an enemy and the infernal plague passive makes it bounce to hit nearby enemies, it will also apply a curse to them and that will make it easier for him to trigger his talent obliteration strike for the 400% bonus damage. In terms of what priority you want on his skill ups, they are all generally quite good. Karmet, from my experience so far, is very dependent on his Festering Curse ultimate being up. He does ridiculous damage when this is up, so definitely want to focus on maxing his ultimate, and especially because you want the longer duration and you want the reduced skill consumption, this will make it a lot easier to have higher uptime on his ultimate. His passive Curse of Obliteration is quite useful, but maybe this is the least useful of the three, as the Curse of Obliteration simply allows him to apply a curse on certain attacks. I believe the obliteration strike can, is just generally he will do it on targets who are cursed. So he doesn't have to be the person applying curse, but we'll test that later. And the third skill, his passive Infernal Plague, has increased damage on bounces. Now this is very powerful. It doesn't seem too great right now, but at max 160% magic damage on two enemies whenever he kills them. If you pair that on a cursed target he's hitting with obliteration strike for 400 damage, with festering curse up for another maximum 400% damage, and then splashing out to deal damage, he is going to be annihilating waves of enemies with the sheer amounts of AoE damage and bouncing damage from Infernal Plague. So my priority would probably be Festering Curse first, then Infernal Plague, and then Curse of Obliteration. In terms of gear sets and stat priority, for the gear sets, as always, you are going to want the Elite Fighter set, or you will look for the Elite Mage set, just so you can get the either 20% attack or 30% crit damage. Flat damage increases tend to be the better things to go for. You could increase his attack speed so that you could get his bounces out faster, his attacks out faster, which will then obviously increase his DPS and make the most of his ultimate festering curse. However, really, attack speed does not scale the best in this game. Going beyond 50, attack speed is, has quite heavy diminishing returns, so I much prefer to just go for the damage sets. On the right side, once again, you'll be focusing on damage sets. The curse is one of the best AoE mage sets, going up to 25% bonus damage. The other two sets to focus on would be the Fracture set for 40% crit damage while above 70% HP. As a mage placed on the sidelines, he should not really be taking damage very often and will likely be under a healer anyway, so he should always be above 70% HP. And then the, the last set to recommend would be Night Terror. You will want to have him at 100% crit rate, so he should always be proccing this and always getting 20% damage bonus. So definitely either Curse, Night Terror or Fracture I would recommend for the right hand sets. However, if you cannot make those, then you can use the Stick set as well. And there are a number of other sets, but generally, 
as always please focus on your stats first that is the priority if you have to run a broken set on the right that is fine so long as you meet your stat goals mine are not the best to land on this character at the moment i've kind of just given him some fairly random gear that i have i've been building a lot of characters recently but i, I wanted to test him out and i think this is decent enough to give him a good showing so as you can see my priority has been hitting 100 percent crit rate i've got a lot of attack all three of my accessories are attack bonus one of them should ideally be crit damage but it's okay he has still got some decent amount of crit damage at the moment i am dealing with a bonus of 125 percent crit damage but you can see my bonus attack is over 200 percent so i really need to swap some of that into crit damage but it's not the end of the world it's okay he has 45 percent rage recovery which is quite nice but i would like to get that a bit higher just because of how high the rage cap is on his ultimate so in terms of what content to use karma in he is an incredibly powerful aoe mage but he does require his ultimate to be up to get the most of his damage I have noticed that he is over presented in the damage graphs at the end because of the sheer damage he does while his festering curse ultimate is up. He tends to overkill enemies to such a massive degree that it makes him seem even stronger than he actually is. So let's test Karma in gear raid 1 all by himself. Gear raid 1 stage 18. So I'll place him here so he has the ability to hit the second wall. And we'll talk a little bit about how he functions and we can see him in action. So you can see he's getting his obliteration strikes on freshly hit enemies and then when they die he's getting the bounces from his second passive. I will save his ultimate for this bigger wave because as mentioned his ultimate has a huge cooldown and he's doing enough damage to get through these guys at a decent pace. His ultimate also feels like it ends quite quickly so I don't want to get it out of the way. Now the enemies are stacked up we will ultimate and you can see the massive amounts of damage just pouring out. Especially when they start to die and you start to get the splash attacks. That's when you really see the power of Karmet's ultimate. But now we're in the down phase. Look at how slow his ultimate is recovering. The rage cap is so high that it takes him a long time for his ultimate to come back. And this is, really is Karmet's weakness. If you can run him with high rage recovery or run him alongside characters who boost rage regen such as Solus Dole or Elowin, I think it could be a great help. This is definitely his biggest weakness. We are down to what I believe is the final wave. There might be one more after this. I will wait for them to reach the, the final wall because I, I want to make the most out of his ultimate. It doesn't last the longest. And here we go. This is good enough. You can see he's starting to throw his attacks out. Massive amounts of nuke damage coming in. And he has dealt with the wave. But we still have the boss and we still have all the adds. I will now fast forward through the rest of this so we can see how he does. There's not really much to talk about. We'll just watch it and see what happens. And we can see that he is just about able to kill the boss before the final wall goes down. There is a fair amount of margin. He is able to solo gear raid 1, so well done to Karmet for that. It is quite slow. It's definitely not ideal. I wouldn't recommend doing it, but it's interesting that he has the capability to do that. So 37.5 million damage. Very powerful, but as you can see, when his ultimate is down, he struggles. And single target damage, although he was marketed as a single target damage mage, he is not a great single target damage mage. He is an AoE mage. He excels when he can burst down tanky groups of enemies. That's his, his sweet point. Vienna is great at just mowing down groups of trash mobs. However, Karmet succeeds best when dealing with groups of tanky mobs because he has such high burst damage potential. If it's a constant flow of lots of enemies, his ultimate's uptime just isn't high enough for him to deal with that in a good way. He is much better at dealing with really heavy large waves of tanky enemies. Karmet's base HP and defense are not really high enough to want to use him in gear raid 2. He could be very good in gear raid 3, although again there are a lot of constant flows of enemies. His ultimate will not be up a great deal of time and it probably will not be enough to be a very reliable member of that team. To top that off, he does not have a very long attack range and gear raid 3 is best suited to units with a longer attack range such as Shark King and Nyx. Karmet should have a lot of success in all arenas, especially the group arena. We'll give him a go now, I haven't really tried him out properly yet. I've been testing Vienna a bit more so we'll try with Karmet down first. My belief is that he won't handle this especially well, but we'll give it a go and see how he does. Let me stop this. So we'll drop Karmet first. I'll put him closer to the wall. As you can see, he doesn't reach these corners, so if I put him one further to the left, he wouldn't be able to reach the bottom right corner of the wall. So we're up against a hat suit, but they've let the enemies through. And it's very slow going. There is not much AOE damage coming out here. 
This is certainly not his bread and butter, and we are not doing great so far. His ultimate is nearly up, but I think we've lost. As you can see, he's he's so dependent on his ultimate. When his ultimate is not up, he just doesn't have the damage output. It's not awful, but it's it's not great compared to a lot of other heroes out there. I'll put down someone to hold off a bit. And now that we've got them here as a cluster, I will activate his ultimate, and we can see how he does with a bit more support. See a much better showing, able to completely obliterate the wave, and we are very far ahead of the team on the right, so it looks like they let someone die. But regardless, his ultimate is very powerful and will just eviscerate waves, but again, his problem, as always, is he is so dependent on having his ultimate up. Now another wave comes along, his ultimate isn't up, and I am in trouble. So I'll be very dependent on having other heroes to help deal with the waves until he's ready, but in likelihood, we're in quite a bit of trouble. Thankfully I have Vienna who is more consistent and her ultimate is very powerful for group arena as well. So although I would say Karma is very strong in group arena, his ultimate's cooldown is just too long. It takes way too long for him to hit his rage cap and it makes it a lot harder to find a time to use him. That being said, I think Karma is definitely powerful in group arena. You just have to be mindful that he can't carry it by himself. He will need support from a secondary mage or from a fighter or a defender who can dish out some AoE damage as well. I briefly alluded to this earlier, but if you look at his skills, especially his passive Curse of Obliteration, the next attack to an enemy target with Curse can trigger Obliteration Strike again. So I quickly built up Janqua, this guy, so I could test out the Curse effect from his talent. However, I neglected to check that the curse only lasts 5 seconds and it's very tricky to test how impactful those 5 seconds are. It's only when he initially blocks them he applies curse for 5 seconds because otherwise it would be insane, of course. Nothing could hit him. So I didn't have much luck testing that. It's quite hard to see. I definitely don't recommend making a team based around having Janqua. He just doesn't apply curse enough for it to be worth it. If you have him as a fighter and you're fairly early game, you need a fighter to build, then he seems like he could be a decent fighter. He has the ability to attack two tiles when his ult is up. And of course, he can hit two enemies at a time anyway. So he seems decent generally, but in terms of using him just for Karmet to get extra curse out, it doesn't seem particularly viable. I think if you're going for that, then you definitely want to have pulled Venoma. Venoma seems to be built basically to work side by side with Karmet as she can apply curse on basic attacks and she seems to have a way of bouncing her attacks which will make it easier to apply these curse effects. So in terms of making a curse build to complement Karmet, I think you kind of really do need Venoma. I don't think... Janqua is going to cut it he just it's just five seconds when they reach him I don't think that's enough time but perhaps I'm wrong if you test it and find different then do let me know as I'm quite interested to hear but yeah generally I don't think a curse build will work without having Venoma to pair alongside on top of that Venoma is the faction lord the legendary lord for the Esoteria faction and that grants faction members 10% stats and it reduces their skill costs by 25% as well as upon entering the field for the first time, increases allies' rage by 30%. That is really good for Karmet. It will make Karmet's ultimate a lot easier. And that is basically the only drawback with Karmet. If you can have his ult up regularly, he will smash content. And reducing his skill cost by 25%, boosting his rage the second time, because I would suggest place Karmet first, use your ult, place Venoma afterwards to boost his ult up again, could work. You will be able to get his ult going off a lot more consistently, and it will become quite a powerful duo. There's a lot of synergy between these two legendaries, and I really do think they are built to be played together. If you have the both of them, congratulations. I think it will be a very powerful team for you. I have also tested Karma in Guild Boss. He performed about as well as Vienna, which was disappointing. When I got him, I really hoped he would be a stronger single target mage, but he doesn't really seem to focus on that niche. As I've said before, he seems primarily for crushing big groups of tanky enemies. I think he'll be very good in the basic trial for this reason. I think overall, Karma is a very strong mage. He is very strong strong AoE damage. His main drawback is his rage cap being so high. If you can find ways to mitigate that issue, if you also have Venoma, then he will be amazing. I think it really pushes him up the tier in how good he is once you have Venoma. Pre having Venoma, he is still a very good hero to have, a very good AoE mage. It's just his consistency means that you can't rely on him as much as you may do other AoE mages such as Ajax, Vienna or Zealus. Though Karma definitely does a lot of damage. And with that, I think we'll end the video. But if you have any questions, you have any suggestions, comments, feedback, please leave it below. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.